How big do you think this is? It might look like just a tiny speck, a grain of sand on the beach. But look again. This time, zoom right in. Still not big enough. Keep zooming until you see this. A single atom. Compared to the atom, the grain of sand is 10 million times larger. 10 million. How many times in your life have you picked up a grain of sand and thought, Wow, I wonder how small I am next to an atom. Of course you haven't. And here's why. When we try to picture things that are really big or really small, we use our imagination. But our brains don't have much to hang their imaginations on. So instead, we try to make sense of the very big and the extremely small by comparing them to things we experience every day. Here's a bigger one. You might have heard it is called the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall and it is the largest known structure in the observable universe, a mind-boggling 10 billion light years across. That's about 10 to the 23rd power meters long. How many grains of sand are there in the observable universe? About 10 to the 18th power. So the largest structure in the observable universe contains around 10 to the 5th power grains of sand, or about 100,000 times more grains of sand than the number of atoms in the observable universe. So which is bigger? The 10 billion light year wide wall of galaxies or a single atom? Well, to answer this, we need to use a logarithmic scale where each tick mark represents 10 times more or less. On this scale, the two are equally big, each 20 marks away from zero. But on a regular scale, they look vastly different. You can see the problem. When we compare really big things to really small things, our brains get confused because all the zeros in between get jumbled up. Let's go smaller. How big is a virus compared to a human cell? How big is a DNA strand compared to a virus? Take a look at this incredible microscopic footage of a human cell. Life is full of big things and small things. But as we move from the very big to the very small, we're struck by the fact that both are actually unknowable. We can't experience either. All we have are numbers in comparison. And since big and small are just relative terms, dependent on our frame of reference, then anything can be big or small. Compared to what? Compared to a mountain, a grain of sand is small. But compared to a planet, it's huge. If you were shrunk down to the size of a proton, you would be almost 100,000 kilometers from the center of our sun, which is so big that it would feel like you were in the middle of a gigantic ocean. In other words, big and small are meaningless without context. They tell us nothing about how something feels. Here's a small insect sitting on a blade of grass. Does it feel big or small to you? Well, here's the same insect. Can you guess how big it is now? Aha! 21 centimeters long. The insect feels bigger. Why? Because we've changed the context. By showing you the insect up close and leaving out the background, our brains fill in the blanks, imagining the insect looming ever closer until it's filling our entire field of vision. In other words, sometimes things feel big or small, but they aren't necessarily. This insect doesn't just show us how deceptive our perceptions can be. This is a real creature that uses trickery to fool its prey. This is a giant tube worm, which grows to lengths of over six meters. It's massive, and thanks to its transparent body, it goes largely unnoticed until it's too late for its prey. For most animals, being six meters long would definitely feel big, but for the giant tube worm, 
it's quite small. It's about as thick as your thumb. So we saw that big and small can refer to size. Big and small can also refer to things like importance, impact, or even difficulty. Take this equation, for example. It's the first step in proving that a plus b equals a plus b. You might say it's a pretty small thing, but without it, we wouldn't have advanced mathematical proofs. What about this? It's the world's tallest building, almost 830 meters tall. There's no doubt it feels big, but how big? Here is how tall it would look if it were placed inside a black hole with a radius of one nanometer. Yeah, it's still pretty big. There's a famous zinc cone, a paradoxical story designed to help you think differently about things. Two monks were walking through the woods when suddenly a woman ran across their path. She was fleeing from a tiger. The monks immediately started running to escape the tiger, and one monk said to the other, Didn't the Buddha teach us not to worry about tigers? And the other monk replied, Yes, but we must worry about women who are fleeing from tigers. This is a story about how big things can feel small, or rather how small things can feel big. As we conclude, let's return to our original question. Is a mountain small compared to a galaxy or is an atom incredibly vast? Now we have some new tools to help us answer this. We know that the way we understand big and small isn't based on any absolute truth. Instead, it's all about context and reference points. There's no such thing as a truly universal scale because every scale is tied to something else. But while this might be disappointing, it also means we have the freedom to define big and small however we want. Maybe the best answer is that a mountain is as big as you need it to be and an atom is as small as you need it to be. Or maybe there's no such thing as an absolute big or a smallest small. Maybe the universe is an endless fractal of scale, which means the same basic patterns keep repeating themselves no matter how big or small you get. For even more dramatic comparisons between the very big and the impossibly small, watch this video.